tremendous decision to join us in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics today. We're in our studio talking to Zach Moss. This guy is a complete running back. He's a very, very tough runner. He has tremendous contact balance. He's going to get everything he possibly can out of every single run. He's going to finish every run hard. He'll catch the ball out of the backfield. He's outstanding in blitz pickup. We talked to him about all of that. We talked to him about how and where he learned it. We talked to him about his high school career, his collegiate career, and here in the National Football League and already in the NFL. Drafted in the third round and traded, now signed as a free agent. <laughs> he's uh, he's gotten to teams every way you can possibly get to teams. We talk about that with him and so much more. You're going to enjoy Zach Moss. We appreciate you joining us once again in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. As always, we are in our studios, outstanding studios provided to us by First Star Logistics. And we are joined by a very, very special guest, the Cincinnati Bengals in free agency, acquire Zach Moss, running back. And Zach Moss is uh, is with us today, and we do appreciate your time. Zach, we're going to talk a little bit of football. How, you, how do you feel about that, my man? Let's do it. Let's do it, man. Appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. All right. So let's go back to your senior year in high school. You rushed for 1,098 yards. You averaged 7.57 yards per attempt. <laughs> <laughs> you score 17 rushing touchdowns. I mean, you, you commit to Miami, and then it ends up being Utah. Why the change? Why the change from Miami to Utah? Uh, I think, you know, I, I knew I didn't want to stay at home, um, you know, growing up in Miami and, you know, all the different things that that offers and being so close to home. Um, you know, I think, you know, I didn't know where it was going to be after I, you know, ended up not saying I was going to go to Miami. Um, obviously, I had family that went to University of Miami and things of that nature. So um, it was a it was a little hard to, you know, not kind of, you know, want to, you know, uh, continue that trend or whatever. Um, but, you know, Utah just made it really, really easy um, for me to want to go there. Um, you know, I think another big thing was, you know, playing time, how quick I was going to play. Um, you read off some stats from my senior year in high school. That was my first year ever playing running back solely, fully ever. Um, and we kind of talked about that a little bit uh, yeah. when I was in Cincy the other day and I saw you. But right. um said so that was my first time, you know, only playing running back. And I wanted to go somewhere where I could, you know, continue to learn, um, you know, and without having to take a red shirt and playing as fast as I could. And Utah gave me the opportunity. Cause you, you were playing, uh, like you said, the first year that you played exclusively at the running back position, you had been playing inside linebacker. So, I mean, I've talked to plenty of safeties that converted from wide receiver to safety. And they said, I can't tell you how much an advantage that was having played the wide receiver position, yeah. knowing route combinations, knowing what guys are thinking, trying to set up routes and all that. And, and having that knowledge at the safety position, you know, seeing it not only through the eyes of a safety, but through the eyes of a former running back. When you're running the football, having played that inside linebacker position and understanding gap control responsibilities and front seven movements and all that, how much of an advantage do you think that gives you as a running back now? Yeah, it's, it's a big advantage. Um, you know, definitely playing that position and kind of understanding what backers want to do, what they're taught to do. Um, that's not a part of my game where I never, you know, I played, you know, linebacker probably from 10 to about uh, six, maybe about 15, 16 years old. So just understanding, you know, the role, you know, what they're supposed to do and things like that and kind of where they're supposed to be in the gaps. And every year, you know, through going through these different um, levels of football, you know, from going from high school and understanding that level of linebackers and how they how they're being taught. Um, then you go to college, where you're playing with even you know guys that are very very talented and learning how they're supposed to do it. So I've always been intrigued, and I never lost that part of it because I knew it was an advantage of just continuing learning because it's only going to help me because you know they're mirroring me more than anything. They're trying to figure out what I'm trying to do and 
how quickly I'm going to declare, you know, where I'm going and things like that. So, you know, understanding that, that gives me, you know, another advantage that I can play off of and, you know, work with that and, you know, make it a little bit more easier for the offensive line to, you know, try to deliver them to their blocks and, you know, then kind of just make it happen out for that. So Utah had some great success when you were there as a player and your senior year at Utah, 1,246 rushing yards, 6.2 yards a carry, which is phenomenal. Rush for 15 touchdowns. First three time thousand yard rusher in school history, um, all time leading rusher in school history, all pack 12 pack 12 offensive player of the year. I mean, 4,067 yards rushing 38 rushing touchdowns, both school records. You just, you lit it up at Utah, didn't you? I tried. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was, it was definitely, you know, great time, you know, going to Utah. Um, I mean, I couldn't have, you know, pictured it happening any better. Um, you know, that, that school gave me the opportunity to play the position that I wanted to play. And, you know, I was able to excel at that position, just being around, you know, guys that allowed me to go ahead and do my best on the field from, you know, obviously the players and, the coaches. Um, so it, it was, it was great. Um, and I just try to do my best each and every week and, you know, kind of leave everything out there. And, you know, I think, I think it worked out pretty well. When, when I watch you run football, one thing that, that sticks out to me as a, as a former offensive lineman is your contact balance. I mean, you are hard to knock off your feet and, I mean, you'll spin, you'll, you'll do everything to, to keep that, uh, to keep that contact balance. And, and you run with that low center of gravity at, you know, at five, nine, you can, and with that, with that, you know, the way you um, control your body, it's like trying to tackle a pectoral and a quadricep. You don't give much hit. <laughs> perfect, man. I mean, it's like, dude, it's, it's tough to get a big hit on you. <laughs> no, it, yeah. I mean, I, I pride myself on that. Um, you know, I try to do more of the hitting than getting hit. Yeah. Um, it's worked for me uh, pretty well and, you know, kind of staying healthy and being healthy and feeling my best. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think it's more so just from, you know, how my body's built up, you know, that we kind of, we touched on it a little bit. It's like, you know, once I started playing the position, I always, you know, loved the position, you know, the running back position, especially, you know, back in the day, you know, early 2000s, mid 2000s, it was a position that was relied on, you know, quite a bit uh, for a while. And it was so many really good running backs. Um, but the two that always stood out to me that I just kind of gravitated towards that I always liked was Marshawn and and Arian Foster. And, you know, Marshawn was more so – I liked the way he approached the game, for yeah. one. Um, just the way he approached it, uh, his body style, his body comp. You know, he didn't have big strides. He wasn't the fastest dude. Um, he wasn't the most shiftiest dude in the league, but he could make you miss. He yep. was hard to bring down. He had great contact balance. Um, just all of those things, I kind of saw myself being able to, you know, with my body makeup and kind of how I was looking at myself and, you know, the way I was training at that time, it was that guy. And then the style of running with Aaron Foster, the patience, the one cut downhill, you know, not going to do, you know, the side to side, try to make you miss too much. It's going to get downhill and take what the defense gives them and keep doing that. Um, so, you know, when I added those two together from just the, the approach and the mindset of and body style of Marshawn to the style of running, which Arian ran with, um, which I always thought he was very underrated in what he was doing Yeah, um, in his time in Houston. Um, and I love his story, you know, kind of growing up being, you know, it's a guy that he wasn't highly recruited, you know, obviously then he went to Tennessee um, and his story going through there and kind of how he rose to be able to have the success that he did in the league. So I always love his story as well. Um, so just putting those two dudes together, you know, I think that's why I've, uh, you know, put a lot of my game is from those two dudes. You know, it's it's again watching you um, with that uh, that low pad level, and you always have them squared up. You have them squared mm -hmm. up to the goal line. You know, I mean, it's it's like man, that that to me that that's that's a big deal. You know, and um, and like you say, maybe you're not gonna 
you know, run away from guys like, you know, Olympic sprint or something, but you have functional football speed. I mean, if there's 30 yards to get, you're going to get them. You know, you're, you're one of those guys that are going to get those yards. There's, there's no question about that. Um, so you, you come out of college and, and you get drafted in the third round by the Buffalo Bills. And you get a guy named Josh Allen that's uh, the quarterback with that football team. So they're going to throw the football. So now it's, it's okay, it's, it's very important that I – let's pick up my – you know, be able to do it and understand what I'm supposed to do, you know, not, uh, not blow an assignment and have a free runner at Josh Allen. And then when I am in the correct position, making sure techniques, fundamentals, all those things are right, and being able to catch the football, you know, out of the backfield and, and providing an alternative there. Did you develop those two skills even further in your time with the Buffalo Bills? Yeah, definitely develop both of those skills even further. Um, you know, in college, obviously, um, my running back coach in college, Coach uh, Kyle McDonald, who is now the, the running back coach at the Chargers, um, he taught us early on how to pass block, like, and in the importance of pass blocking, right? You know, the importance part of it stuck out to me, obviously, because I knew I had dreams and aspirations of going to that next level. Um, and hopefully playing out a lengthy career. Um, and, you know, it's real easy for anybody to run the ball. Like, you can put almost anybody to run a ball. That's really not that hard. You see it now. They got receivers, you know, lined up in the backfield and things of that nature. So it's not, you know, super hard to run the ball. Um, you can fall for it and get four yards sometimes. Right. Um, but, you know, he, he taught us that, you know, the thing that was going to make you stick in this league is pass protection, right? Being able to block for the, you know, the franchise. You know, you play in college, sometimes, you know, you might be the best player on the team or somebody on your defense side might be the best. Your quarterback sometimes isn't always the best player, right? In this league, the quarterback makes every single thing go. Um, so when I got drafted to Buffalo, it was like a perfect matchup from having like, okay, well, I'm not really worried about not being able to play because I know I can get on the field and I can block, right? And then once I put, you know, the time in and, and, and learning all that type of stuff into the, you know, learning the, the nuances of the offense and what we want to do and execute each and every week, um, you know, it made it so much easier to go out there and play. And, um, you know, blocking was something that was big for me then. It's been big for me um, every year since. And, you know, in this league, you're going to play with really, really good quarterbacks, if you stick around long enough. Um, so if you can block, you're just going to continue to add years to your career. Um, and the more you can do, the better. So being able to block and understanding my blocking assignments is, you know, very, very big for me and something I take pride in. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be beautiful music to Joe Burrow's ears when he hears this, that you're talking about how important, you know, blitz pickup, pass protection, all that sort of thing is. And and, uh, you know, it's it, you have a very high football IQ, I mean, in terms of the intelligence of knowing, you know, um, who you're supposed to block uh, mm -hmm. and, and working with, you know, your your tight ends, everybody else involved in the protection, the offensive line, uh, you know, what linemen are going to take block from the inside out. And you've got this outside guy if he comes. And sometimes there's like, OK, I've got the inside guy, but if he doesn't come, I check back out to the outside guy. All those things that go along with it everybody feels very comfortable about your ability to handle all that. Have you always had a pretty good football IQ? Yeah. You know, it's definitely something that's, you know, as years ago, you try to figure out ways to continue to get better um, and learn more about the game and things like, of that nature. But it's something I've always had a, more of a natural ability to kind of just understand. Um, it, it can be, you know, a good and a bad thing because I can learn, you know, look at a play one time and, execute that play, go out and just run it once, and then it's kind of stuck um, <laughs> without me really trying. Um, That's great. Uh, so it, it's a good thing, you know, that I can just go on the field and, you know, if we're in, depending on what protection we're in, you know, and I, I don't like to kind of hide anything. You know, I go out and I'll point at exactly at who I got, where I'm supposed to go next. I'll just go stand and point directly at those two guys. Um, or three guys, whoever it is. And, you know, in Buffalo, they gave me a lot of responsibility. You know, the backs there, we had to do a lot of responsibility of knowing, you know, pass protections and pass blocking and being able to scan left to right um, at all times, no matter what side of the field we're on. You know, sometimes in this league, you know, a lot of teams, 
they'll, you know, slide the protection away um, from the running back. Yep. That way, you know, they don't have that much to do in a sense, right? But in Buffalo, we would slide it to us, from us. Um, it really didn't matter. Um, and then being in that conference, you know, playing against New England and, and Miami, and Miami at the time was kind of a New England-based defense, so just different body types. And, you know, it was kind of – it was real – it was real, you know, good to learn and see different body types and, you know, kind of be able to process from there. So now when I see a linebacker body type, I know exactly where he's supposed to be, where he's not supposed to be. And then if it's a DB, you know, you bring the safety down to that spot. I can also, you know, be able to understand what their their, their job is and things like that. And, um, you know, I've also just had really good coaches as well, you know, throughout my time um, that helped me learn and process the game a lot faster and just broke it down nice and easy. Um, and, you know, I just be able to put my own, my own touch on it. So you were drafted in the third round by the Buffalo bills, and then you get traded to the Indianapolis Colts. Um, so you're, you're with another franchise. And then at the end of July, you break your arm, broken arm. You have to have surgery uh, this past season of, of 23 but you come back and you lead the team yeah. in rushing, 794 rushing yards, five touchdowns, another 192 yards receiving, two more touchdowns, you know, almost, uh, you know, almost a thousand yards of offense, 14 games you played, eight of them you started. I mean, um, what was it like making the transition from Buffalo to Indianapolis? How similar, how different were things for you offensively and with your responsibilities within those offenses? Uh, totally different offense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, totally different office. When I got there, I, um, you know, we had Matt Ryan with the starter quarterback. So it's a totally different offense um, from being in the offense with Josh. It, being in the offense with Josh is more, uh, you know, spread and, you know, kind of spaced out and things of that nature. Um, in, in Indy, when we had Matt, you know, it was very systematic type of offense and things, everything kind of played off, you know, each other. Um, but when I got there, you know, it was it was a good thing. I was kind of you know happy to go to Indy because I knew it was a run first team, yeah. um, which was that's who I am. I'm a back that loves to be able to run the ball. You know, 15, 20 touches. I'm able to handle that, um, and I feel like I've done you know a pretty good job each and every time that I've been able to get that amount of opportunities. Um, but so when I went to Indy, I was like, okay, well I know I'm going to be able to be and the team that runs the ball. Um, obviously, knew JT was going to be there and things right. like that, and, you know, he's a, a hell of a player. Um, so I didn't know what it was going to look like, how many, you know, I didn't really have any expectations on, um, you know, playing time or anything like that. Um, unfortunately, he, you know, he ended up getting injured, and I was able to finish out the season. Right. Um, and, you know, it was a – I had, you know, one really good game that I was proud of, uh, you know, that ending the season out, but those three or four games where I was the starter, you know, it was it was crazy because I was just getting my feet back wet, or right? I hadn't played, you know, essentially in that capacity, uh, you know, of a game in a while. So it was like, okay, I'm learning the offense still. Like every week, I was still <laughs> learning the offense, learning the plays, learning everything, kind of, and then learning the guys in front of me right. as well at the same time. So with all that, like just, but I felt like I kept getting better week after week after week. Like I, I you know, JT got hurt the Vikings game. Uh, I was the next man up, so I finished out the Vikings game. Didn't have a great game, but you know, I, I, I took away from the film and being like, okay, just getting on the, you know, okay, okay, cool. Then I think we ended up playing the Chargers next, and I had about sixty-seven yards that game, um, and you know, I felt good about that and just what I was able to do essentially. Um, then we played the Giants and had about another 60 or 70 yards again. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm feeling good. I know, you know, this offensive line that I got can obviously block the run. They have been great at blocking the run for years. Right. Um, so I'm like, okay. And then the Houston game, uh, in the season out, um, you know, that was just, just, just a beautiful game. Just the way to close that out, you know, going to the off season with all type of momentum, feel really, really good. Um, at least put myself in, you know, the RB2 going into next season. Um, obviously, we knew we were going to have new coaches and all this different type of stuff. So, 
you know, I was like, okay, well, I'll put enough here, right, to be able to, when they see it, they're like, okay, we can probably use this guy. Um, and then, you know, obviously JT's uh, injury and then uh, contraction and stuff kind of just drug out throughout the throughout the offseason and to OTAs and um, training camp. OTAs, you know, I just continued to just build and build and build confidence and learn, you know, now we have a new offense. So learning the new offense and getting, you know, just getting to work with those guys and putting the work in um, as the RB1 at the time. So, you know, I was feeling pretty good and training camp came around and did about the first week of that. And then, um, as you mentioned, broke my arm, <laughs> my forearm on the first day of full pads. Unreal. Uh, yeah, so, you know, automatically, you know, you know, a lot of people will just go straight into that mindset of, like, why this, why that, bad timing. And, you know, you you know, you know, go on social media and you say, oh, he missed out on the opportunity, you know, all these different type of uh, just, you know, conversations that's happening and things like that. Um, but, you know, I just stayed into my routine and just tried to do my best to rehab and get as healthy as I could. He ended up only missing one game, and man, I couldn't have, uh, you know, pictured it happening any better yeah, um, awesome. than it did when I came back. Yeah, that, that's that's incredible. I mean, that's a, that's an unbelievable recovery, and then to put up the numbers that I talked about that that you put up are are, j- are just phenomenal. So so now you you were drafted in the third round, you were traded, and now. As a free agent, you sign with the Cincinnati Bengals. So I mean, you've experienced the gamut of how you know how you can, uh, from a personnel standpoint, how you can move around the National Football League. And the good news is, the only other one is termination. You don't want to deal with that for a while. You got about ten years left before you deal with something yeah. like that. But, uh, so you you come to Cincinnati, a uh, uh, two year contract. What 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 did you like um, about the potential? Uh, of, of joining the Cincinnati Bengals organization when you were in the process of making your decision? Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, when, you know, Cincinnati got in the picture, um, you know, honestly, it was kind of late in the day when they came around because I hadn't even been really thinking hmm. of uh, Cincinnati being a, a potential spot. Um, so, you know, when it came around, you know, the first thing that went through my mind was, okay, well, I know the type of talent they have on the offensive side of the ball, right? And then we just had played last season. And I knew the offensive talent, obviously, from last year, then the years before, Super Bowl run, AFC Championship run, being one play away from going to two straight Super Bowls, um, and being only a few plays away in that Super Bowl uh, in L.A. for winning. Um, so I knew the type of talent was there. Um, and, you know, I kind of said it, you know, all through the pressure, uh, the other day, but just the space, like just the space for a running back to be, you know, in an offense that has space <laughs> yep. Yep. is, is, you know, pretty, and I, you know, I took pride in, you know, going against defenses, knowing they might stack the box, um, you know, maybe having to deal with a safety and, you know, sometimes getting tackled by five, six dudes and, you know, only getting four yards. You know, I took pride in that sometimes, right. a lot of time. But, you know, being able to go into a team that, you know, loves to execute plays and build offense out of space and then having the weapons outside to do it, um, you know, that's going to be huge. Um, you know, last time I played in the offense with space to that degree, right, um, you know, we had my senior high school, we had five dudes go Division One at receiver. Wow. Um, and our quarterback, uh, obviously, Tyler Huntley, I played with him in Utah. Um, yeah. And now he just signed with the Browns. So and so I think he played the Bengals in the playoffs one year when Lamar yeah. Turk. So yeah. the last time I was in offense with that much space, I didn't even know that stat, but you said 7.2. Now, obviously, this is the league and it's probably not going to be 7.2. <laughs> right. Right. I want to make that, put that out there and make that real clear. But, you know, there's something about just being in offense with space, you know, knowing, okay, the most I can really see right in a box is, you know, five, six guys. If you do any more than that, man, it's, you know, (laughs) we got, it's going to be real bad for you, like really quick. (laughs) 
Right. Um, I mean, just because you and, you and you've seen it just over the years, man. These guys, you know, Jamar and and, and T and Joe, and now you add Mike and Seki, you know, come across the middle and and Irwin and all these guys that have been a big part of you know the front of the team for a while now. You know, it's hard to load up a box. It's just yep. really really hard. And then when you have a quarterback like Joe who can see the game the way he sees the game and gets the ball out of his hands so fast and you know, takes advantage of every single thing that the defense gives gives them, you know, and that makes it really, really hard. So, you know, it's I'm looking definitely forward to OTAs and kind of seeing, you know, carving out a role and kind of seeing what that role is and um, getting with the big guys up front and just learning those guys and kind of seeing, you know, how I can help them and, you know, vice versa. Because I think it's, it it could be a, a good thing. We got a lot of talent in the running back room as well, obviously. Um, you know, so with that much space, you know, we got guys that can do a lot of damage. Um, and it's all about, you know, going out there and doing it. So you, you mentioned, um, you know, that, that during the course of your career in Buffalo, uh, Devin Singletary was somebody that you kind of split duties with a little bit. Um, Jonathan Taylor with the Indianapolis Colts. And you mentioned here in Cincinnati. I mean, everybody knows Brown had a had some success, obviously, with the Bengals as a rookie. He he can he can hit the home run. He's a long speed guy. There's no question yeah. about that. So I mean, you you weren't really promised any role as such, other than you know you're going to be part of the running back room and and let's go out and compete and see who gets what. But I mean, obviously, they think highly of you <laughs> to sign you as a free agent and uh, and to, and to get after it. They they understand the talents you have and. Um, but in today's NFL, you don't want to beat the heck out of one running back. There's no question about that. You want to have, you know, multiple multiple bodies. But man, I'm excited to see you in a in a situation where that box isn't loaded, like you said. You know, I mean, the field spread. They got to have people out there covering, or it's going to be a one play drive. Man, it'll be over. <laughs> and then, you know, to see to see you take advantage of those uh, those light boxes, man. I'm excited to see you get after it. I really am. Yeah, I, it's, it's definitely going to be a lot of fun. Um, like I say, you know, it's all about the work, you know, the work we're going to put in that we've been putting in right now. And then obviously the work we're going to put in um, during OTAs and, you know, building that camaraderie and obviously us, like, you know, the new guys we're joining in and things like that. So our job is to come in and, you know, give these guys and, you know, work our tails off and, you know, you know, do our best that we can um, each and every day and just make sure that it's full with, you know, competition, you know, and being leaders and being accountable um, and being able to depend on each guy, that, you know, no matter what the role is, whatever the rough spot is, uh, just being guys that, you know, this guy can look over to and be like, okay, I can depend on this guy and he knows his job and he's going to do his job at a high level. I think everybody listening to this podcast will agree that uh, you're intelligent, articulate, you know, you're, you're, seem like a heck of a good guy and and the Bengals have built uh, a culture with great chemistry you know in the locker room and you're going to be a great addition to that and what sold me is you know on a day so important to you who's with you your wife your nine-month-old son I mean you're a family man I mean there's a that that had to be uh it had to be a big day for you a great day for your family man yeah, yeah, it was definitely was, uh, you know, I definitely wanted to have him there uh, for the memories. And, you know, I'm big about uh, creating memories and things like that. You know, those are things that last. Um, and if we, as many as I can create, um, that's what I want to do. So it was definitely a great time, great day. And hopefully we can continue to build on that uh, going going forward. Now you have to just uh, decide. I'm sure you and your wife didn't have time to go look at uh, real estate locations or anything like that <laughs> where you might want to live and everything that goes along with it. But that's, uh, that's going to be part of the process now. And I, I was, I was married my rookie year in the, in the national football league as well. In fact, I get married like a week before training camp, uh, my rookie year. And, and, and I'm, I'm a guy that can attest to the fact that wives, man, they're MVPs. When you have a wife an understanding wife, what it's like to be married to a professional athlete, that's a rare breed. I mean, for them to handle it well, that's a that's a big deal. That's a big plus, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a big plus. It's, it's you know it's so much demand um, that's required from us. It, you know, and a lot of people think you know it's, it goes into the off season too. Just 
the daily commitment of being your best, feeling your best. Um, you know, you don't always feel your best, so that could be a little tough as well. Right. Um, but you know, it definitely makes it you know so much so much easier to you know handle just the day to day um, and be able to you know continue to play this game at a high level. We talked about this uh, when you were in town as well. Uh, Frank Pollock's running game, inside outside zone. You know some of that zone concept stuff where you make such good decisions and and make your reads either you know bounce outside, cut it back, or stay right on course or whatever it might be. And then he has you know the the gap scheme where you're going to block down and it's going to pull and pin. You know, and there's there's angle blocking and all that going on to make sure the defense. You know, we're not going to do the same thing over and over. We're going to have multiple yeah. things to do <laughs> here. The multiplicity of the of the run game that fits you to a T, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, you know, the inside zone stuff, you know, that was like definitely the first type of run scheming that that I uh, learned when I started playing running back. And that's predominantly what we ran in right. high school. Right. Um, and then when I got to college at Utah, uh, I went to three different officer coordinators in four years. Wow. Um, and, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a bit different. You know, a lot of, you know, inside zone is – Kind of everybody runs the same type of stuff essentially, um, but being able to be in the, in the offense that you know loves to utilize the inside zone game, obviously you can you can do RPOs and all that type of stuff off of that stuff now, which makes sure. it gives you more space. Um, the outside zone stuff, um, I kind of got introduced to that more so when I got to Buffalo. That was kind of one of our more staple runs, especially under center. Um, and then the gap scheme stuff, which Indy loved to do, uh, was great. You know, I always, anytime we had a gap scheme, you know, you, you know, you get that list, you know, when you come in on Wednesday, you get that list of what runs we trying to, you know, put in, what the run plan is and things like that. And every time I would see a certain play on there that was gap scheme or we had two or three gap schemes, and I was like, okay, well, we got 10 yards minimum, <laughs> at least, uh, you know, if everything gets – blocked up nice and easy. Um, so, you know, being able to have been through, you know, all of those different run schemes and have a good feel for those run schemes and, uh, you know, understanding them, you know, I think that's really, really good. And, you know, that was also another thing that um, obviously intrigued me about since then. Well, as a former offensive lineman uh, watching you on tape, I know that your teammates in the offensive line are love to block for you because, one thing that I always respected was a running back that, man, like you said, make a decision, put the foot in the ground, one cut and go. None of this, oh, do I, don't I, hesitation, you know. It's like, come on, man, decide something. Uh, you, watching you run, I mean, you are an offensive lineman's dream. It's like, hit it, you know. I mean, go, get after it, and you do. You get after it big time, and, and the big boys up front are going to appreciate the heck out of that, Zach. Yeah, man, um, you know, it's – it's great when I hear that just because, you know, that's something that I really think about. Um, and like I said, like just being intertwined with the offensive line and, you know, being around those guys, because you spend so much time with them, sure. you know, you want to be able to understand what they want to do and they know what you like to do. Like it will be times, you know, last season, um, you know, big Q, Quinn Nelson, yep. you know, I'll tell them, Hey, this is what I'm seeing. This is what I want. Like, just get to the second level a lot faster. Don't hang. Don't post hang too long. Too long. Just go ahead and get up there because I'm I'm holding the linebacker long enough, you know, for you. Um, or he'll tell me vice versa. Hey, don't run over that way. Like that's we don't we don't, don't do that. Right. Um, but you know, just being able to get downhill. You know, I like to try to get downhill as quick as I can. Um, and you know, that keeps a lot of the line clean, man. Sometimes you're just dancing back there guys start to fall in and fall into your legs and all type of stuff. So I try to get through that way, get through that first line as quick as I can, keep those guys clean and healthy. And, um, you know, even when it's ugly and muddy, you know, just try to make the best out of it and just kind of push the pile. Yeah, man, you run sudden. I mean, you get a burst now. I mean, your, your, your initial quickness is, is, is outstanding. And, uh, I can see why the Colts run that inside zone. They got a couple of pro bowlers at center and guard. You know, <laughs> yeah. after those big boys up front like that, that's uh, that's pretty awesome. Well, I I enjoyed the heck out of meeting you uh, when you came in town to do your your press conference, and 
uh, I really, really enjoyed this time we spent to, uh, to introduce you to, to everybody here today. You're, you're a heck of a guy and uh, an, out, an outstanding football player. And the Bengals, I know, feel very, very fortunate to have you under contract for a couple of years, my man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it very, very much. Zach, have, a, have the best day you ever had. Thanks for joining us. And I uh, look forward to seeing you at OTAs and, and getting ready for training camp. Uh, yeah. Have a, have a good off season. Yes, sir. I'll see you real soon. You take yes, care. Sir. Take care. Dave Lapham here. And every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.